Hello, and thank you for joining me and taking the time to learn about how to use iAnnotate on your iPad. iAnnotate is a fantastic tool that allows you to work with documents in ways that were previously not possible. The advanced features in iAnnotate set it apart from all other annotation tools. This is a tool that will never get old, is always being updated, and has great features. When you first launch iAnnotate, you'll be taken to the library where they have a great tutorial guide that will provide a great overview of the app that you can go through and review at your leisure. We're going to go ahead and take a look at some of these features now. Let's go ahead and take a tour. We'll begin by connecting your cloud accounts. On the left hand side, the last option in the toolbar is connections. Go ahead and tap on that. You'll notice there are many options for which cloud accounts you can connect. You can also connect multiple accounts from the same cloud. For example, if you have two Google Drive accounts, you can connect both accounts to iAnnotate. Let's go ahead and practice connecting our Google Drive account. I would go to add Google Drive. I would go ahead and enter my username. And then I'm going to go ahead and tap on set up connection. Once you've entered your username, your icon will now appear. Go ahead and tap on your cloud account icon and it will go ahead and prompt you for your password. Once you've entered your password, it will ask you if you would like to connect your iAnnotate and Google Drive account. Go ahead and tap Accept, and your cloud account will now appear in iAnnotate. You can bring files in and out of here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it would be like to, say, work with a lecture PDF. So I have a document over here that we're going to pull called Sample PDF. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the features. Now, on the right hand side, you'll see that I have a toolbar. This toolbar is where all of my annotation tools will be. Now, if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, one of the things you'll notice is that there is a number here that says one of two. This means that I have two toolbars and all I have to do is go ahead and swipe to the left and you'll notice my toolbar will now appear as the second one with different options. These toolbars can be customized and you can add more if you so choose. How would you do this? Well, let's go ahead and go to the top of the toolbar where you'll notice there's a plus sign. If you tap on the plus sign, you'll be brought to the toolbar menu. You'll notice there are multiple categories for the different types of tools that are available. Don't feel like you have to become familiar with all of these tools at once. I don't even think I know all of these tools, but as time goes on, you will find different ones that will help meet your needs and that you will maybe perhaps enter into your toolbar. So you'll notice at the top right, there's an option to add a toolbar. So let's go ahead and tap on the plus sign. And you'll notice they've given us some options for toolbars that we can add. For example, different colored highlighters, different colored notes, um, page navigation, but perhaps you were looking for something a little bit more specific. You would perhaps go ahead and select new custom toolbar. Here you'll get a blank toolbar where you can drag in any of the tools that you like, creating your own customized toolbar. However, let's say you're back in your toolbar menu and you're thinking, you know what, I really like this set of tools, but there's just one or two I want to change. No need to go ahead and make a custom toolbar. Let's go ahead and just edit the current toolbar that's already there. So again, we're going to go ahead and go back to our plus sign. And what I'm going to do is tap on the icon in my toolbar that I don't want and drag it into the toolbar menu. So let's say I don't want the feather looking icon. I'm going to go ahead and tap on it and drag it into my toolbar. Now, perhaps what I would rather have in there is a typewriter with today's date so that my notes always have their dates on them. I'm going to go ahead and hold down and I'm going to drag it over to the toolbar and you'll notice that that option has now appeared. Again, do take some time to explore the toolbar options and all of the different tools that are available and create your own customized toolbars. So what does it look like now when we go ahead and actually use some of these tools? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the first one, which is a pencil. One of the other things you might notice is that my first two icons are pencils. The only difference is that they are different colors. And you'll notice now on the right hand side of the toolbar 
are all of these different colors and these different colors represent the colors of the tool. If I go ahead and I swipe, you'll notice over here towards the bottom, I've got different color highlighters that I can use as well. So again, this is another option of how you can customize your toolbar. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these tools. So the first one is a pencil. And immediately once I tap it, you'll notice that options are now appear for me. So for example, I can go ahead and choose the color of my pencil. I can choose how thick or thin I want it to be. I can choose the opacity of my pencil as well. So let's go ahead and just adjust some settings right over here. And let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. Um, maybe that's perhaps a little bit too light for me. I can go ahead and edit that option right over here. Now perhaps I don't like that annotation at all and I made a mistake and that's not what I meant to circle. If I want to delete my annotation, all I have to do is tap on it and you'll notice this time a different set of tools appear. So if I want to delete it, I'm going to go ahead and tap on the trash can. It's going to ask me if I'm sure, yes I'm sure, let's delete. And there we go, the annotation is no longer there. Your annotations can always be edited at any time by a simple tap on the annotation and a tap on the trash. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the highlighter. This is a really great feature for when you're reading through documents, if you are reading through notes and you want to highlight certain areas, again, you have the option to change colors. All you have to do is simply click on it. You can choose it and they will change immediately. Our next option is the option to underline. So perhaps you want to underline some of the notes that you know are being um, read, or perhaps you're going through a document, you're looking through a research article, trying to gather points, you can use the underline feature to go ahead and do that. Another great tool that you can see in the toolbar is this little text message icon. This is actually a comment box to create a note. Now, one of the great things about these annotation tools is that before when you were limited to, you know, pen and paper, you really could only use the amount of space that was given to you. Now that we have notes, we can create multiple notes on a slide, allowing us to take down as much information as we want and really allowing us to summarize the information, add in questions and anything else that we think is pertinent. Also, what's really fantastic is you can go back to these notes at any time and add in any type of information that you think might be useful to you. So let's go ahead and add a note. So you can see that I can type as much as I want in here. I type in this box and I can keep going. I can leave spaces. When I'm done, just gonna hit this little minus sign and there we go, my note is now saved. So you can see if I want, maybe I've got another idea I wanna use in here, but I wanna differentiate it with a different color. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and you'll notice now, again, I can type in the box, and my new note has now appeared. So as you can see, I can hold my note down and drag it around and place it wherever I'd like it to go. Now, if I hold down my annotation, you'll notice I've got a couple more options. One of the things you'll notice is that I can copy the annotation. So say I want to repeat it somewhere else because it's the same idea. I can go ahead, copy it, and then paste the annotation wherever I like. Another thing you might notice is that it has picked up on what some of my latest tools were. So if you find yourself using a tool often, instead of having to go back to the toolbar, you can just go ahead, press down, and the menu will appear. Another great option that you have is the text tool where you can go ahead and you can type directly into your document. What's great about this tool is, again, you can move it around just by simply holding down on it. And what's great about this tool is right over here, you'll see the first icon in my little menu that's appeared are the handles. So if I want to perhaps make this a bit bigger, I can drag my handles out. I can maybe go ahead and change the color, and then I'm gonna go ahead and change the size to make it a little bit bigger. I can also align it in different places. I can change the font if I so choose, and I can customize the text so that it is how I want it to be. The next great tool I'm gonna to show you are stamps. Stamps are really great for just adding in little bits of information 
to your document that perhaps you know would prompt a reminder or a note about something that you need to remember so for example one of the ones that we might put in is a question mark you know perhaps this slide we're not really sure we've got some questions on it let's go ahead and add in a stamp for question marks that I know later on to go back and ask my professor or do some more research. Now, if I wanna make some more detailed notes about what my question specifically is, I can type my question in right over here. And there we go, I've got it saved and now my little stamp annotation has my question along with it. The next one we're going to take a look at is bookmarks. Bookmarks are great for being able to organize your notes according to categories or topics. You can bookmark certain sections. Let's go ahead and try one. Let's give this a different color and let's go ahead and add a bookmark right over here. And we're going to say review on the weekend because perhaps, you know, we don't remember everything about this topic. Perhaps this topic is a little bit new to us. We want to make sure we remember to renew it. We're going to bookmark all the areas that we're going to want to review and study a little bit further. We can also do bookmarks according to categories, keywords. Again, really trying to think about how you're going to organize your notes so that when you're going back and searching, you have these keywords and you've used them strategically to be able to quickly get information when you need it. All right, so those are pretty much the main tools. A lot of the other tools, like I said, go ahead, explore them at your leisure. As always, if you have any questions, come see me. I love iAnnotate. I love playing with iAnnotate, and I'd be more than happy to sit with you and work through and explore this wonderful app. Now, let's go ahead and go back to the library for a few moments so I can show you a little bit more about the tools on this left-hand side toolbar. So one of the other great things that's here is the second to last option, which is add. Now, this is a great feature. And this is again, really what sort of sets iAnnotate apart from a lot of the other annotation apps that you might come across. You can go ahead and actually create a blank PDF directly within the app. And you'll notice that you can choose a blank page, a lined page or graph paper. You can choose whether you want it to be portrait or landscape. You can pick a number of pages and if you decide later on you want to add or delete pages, you have the option to do that in the toolbar. Always give your name a file. Again, keeping yourself organized is going to allow you to go back to your notes more efficiently. When you're done and when you're ready, go ahead and click the check mark and you'll see that a new document file will appear for you ready for you to use. So another option over here in the add menu is to create a folder. So perhaps you've got multiple documents now, you want to organize them, you can go ahead, create a folder and move documents in. Now let's go ahead and say I've created a folder and I'd like to move my sample PDF into my sample folder. Well, one of the things I'm going to do is go ahead and tap on my sample PDF document. And you'll notice that when I do that, a new menu has appeared for me on the left hand side. I can now choose a couple different things. Well, first of all, I want to move my document, right? So I'm going to go ahead and select move and I'm going to choose the location where I want it to go to. Now I want to make sure that I can easily go back and find that document and perhaps there are certain items in there that I want to mark. Another great thing you can do, just like you can do with Evernote, is we can tag our notes. So let's say we're gonna tag this with, let's just say sample. And there we go, I've now created a tag for my document that I can go back and search. So let's go ahead and give this another tag and let's just say tips. So you'll notice that it tells me that I have now tagged this file with this. So let's say now it's been a while and I knew I had this document, you know, and I had tagged it. You know, I'm looking for all these tips about what to do and how to use things. I'm going to go ahead. I can't remember exactly what the document is, but I know I tagged it with tips because that's what I'm looking for. One of the things I'm going to want to do is in my search, I don't want to look through the text of the document. I'm looking for my tags. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on full text and you'll notice it's going to give me some options for what exactly it is that I want to search. I can definitely choose to search keywords through the document by going through the full text. But if I've organized my documents correctly, according to tags, 
that I've used, you know, with these categories and keywords, I can go ahead and select the tags option and then any document that had the keyword tips in it will now appear. This is really a great feature for again, when you're out at your clerkships or you're studying for your board exams and you want information quickly at your fingertips, having tagged documents correctly will allow you to be able to retrieve them a lot faster. All right, so let's go ahead and go back. Another great thing that I love about iAnnotate is this ability to be able to import from the web. Now, let's say you're doing a research paper and you know, you've know you come across, um, let's go ahead and search diabetes. Um, oh, whoops, spelled it wrong. So let's say that you know, you've come down and oh, let's just say you know, you've got something here, you really like the look of this information, you wanna save it. We're gonna go ahead and on the top left-hand side is a toolbar. We're gonna to pick this third arrow, which is jumping out of a box, and we're going to say save page as PDF. So it is now being saved. It saved my entire file for me and it's being placed in my local files folder. So now that I'm back in my library, you'll see that in my local files, I have the diabetes as a PDF that I just imported from the web. Now, if I open this up, I now have all my annotation tools. I can go ahead, I can mark items that I think are significant. And this is again, a great tool to be able to use when researching for papers. Now, again, like with anything else, I can go ahead and I can add tags to this document. If I go over back to my library and I tap on my document, again, it will bring up that menu, allowing me to add tags to it, keywords you know, relating to my research paper. All right, so I think we're gonna stop here for today. I'd really like you to spend some time exploring these different features, practice you know, trying it out during lecture this week, and next time we'll go ahead in our second tutorial and go into some other details once you have some more experience using iAnnotate. As always, if you have any questions at all, you can email me or feel free to come see me anytime.